Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about the UV index. I'm gonna explain what the UV index means and I'm gonna be answering the question, hey, do I really need to be putting on sunscreen if the UV index is only like zero or one? If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. If you like skincare content, consider subscribing or following me over on Instagram or TikTok because I post on those platforms quite a bit as well. The UV index is a forecast of the expected risk of overexposure to UV rays from the sun. It's a scale that predicts UV exposure from the sun at the Earth's surface on a, any given day. It ranges from zero or minimal risk all the way up to 11 plus extreme risk. Countries all over the world utilize the UV index as advocated by the World Health Organization, but each country differs ever so slightly in how the calculation is determined. In the US, the National Weather Service and the Environmental Protection Agency are tasked with deriving the UV index. How is the UV index even calculated? Well, in the US, a computer model is used to calculate the UV exposure at ground level as it relates to the concentration of ozone, cloud coverage, and latitude, as these things all affect the relative amount of UV reaching the surface of the Earth. The UV index is gonna vary depending on what area of the country you're in or the world you're in, obviously, because UV index will change with latitude. Think of the UV index as a tool for predicting the risk of a sunburn. The higher the UV index you can think of, the stronger the amount of UV rays reaching the earth and the greater the risk of extreme sun damage and sunburn. The UV index actually fluctuates throughout the day and it is at its peak at noon. So when you look up the UV index, it is giving you a prediction for noon that day. But the UV index slowly decreases as the day winds on. Think of the UV index as a scale that forecasts the risk of extreme sun damage. The higher the UV index, the more likely you are to get a sunburn or to have extreme sun damage if you are a paler skin type. The UV index is actually forecasted based on what's called Fitzpatrick phototype two. These are people who have paler skin that burns easily. The higher the UV index, not only the more likely you are to sustain a sunburn or extreme sun damage, but it's gonna happen a lot faster. You can actually go online into the app store, I think, and download the EPA's UV index app if you want to have it on your phone. It is a useful tool and I'll explain how I think it is helpful in your day-to-day decision-making. I think the UV index is a great tool for helping to inform your decisions about your outdoor exposure for any given day. Another quick and easy tool to assess kind of the strength, the potency, the intensity of UV rays on a given day is actually to look at your shadow. If your shadow is shorter than you are, that means the rays are more intense. Probably a good idea to either cover up seek shade or just come indoors. You don't wanna be out too long when, the shadow, when your shadow is shorter than you are. The shorter your shadow, the more intense the UV, the UV rays are coming from the sun. Why does all of this matter? Well, if you're not familiar, UV rays from the sun, not only are they responsible for a sunburn, which largely is what the UV index is kinda predicting risk of, but UV rays from the sun, they damage the DNA in the skin cells, they suppress the skin's immune system, cause all sorts of damage, that ultimately not only sets the stage for uh, skin cancers like basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, or melanoma, some types of melanoma, but they also contribute to skin aging and a lot of skin problems like hyperpigmentation, melasma, things like rosacea. So how can you use the UV index to help inform your decision-making for a given day? Well, if the UV index is zero to one, that's actually pretty low risk of you sustaining a sunburn if you were to go out without any sun protection on. So that basically means that the that's a safe time to actually be outside. If the UV index is three to five, that is considered a moderate and it is a time where you wanna be more mindful, not stay out too, too long, and of course, make sure you are taking basic sun protective behaviors. You may want to seek out shade, but if the UV index is six to seven, that's considered high risk, and you really need to be diligently, not only reapplying sunscreen every two hours while you're outdoors, but diligently making sure that you're wearing a hat, you're wearing sunglasses, and you know, seeking out shade aggressively because your risk of a burn is much, much greater. When the UV index is eight to 10, you wanna take extra precautions and try and avoid as much as possible being outdoors during the midday hours. Lastly, when the UV index is 11 plus, that is considered extreme. 
and the skin will burn within a matter of minutes if unprotected. And when it's 11 plus, you really want to think critically, do I need to be outside? Try and stay indoors when the UV index is that high. And if you have to go outside, say to run out to your car, make sure you are using multiple forms of sun protection, not only sunscreen, but a hat. The UV index really is meant to help guide you as to the relative intensity, if you will, of UV rays reaching the earth on any given day. And it helps to give you an idea, a sense of your risk of a sunburn without any sun protection on on a given day. But it's not to suggest that unprotected sun exposure is risk-free on days that you have a lower UV index. On high and extreme sun exposure days, it's best to avoid midday sun exposure. When the UV index is high, you definitely want to make sure you're wearing an SPF 30 or higher sunscreen. You're wearing sunglasses with 100% UV protection to protect your eyes. You're wearing a hat when you're out outside to protect your ears, your forehead, the back of your neck. Ideally, it would be a wide brimmed hat. And simply put, the UV index is kind of a clue like, hey, the sun is really strong today. It's eight, nine, 10, 11 plus. Maybe I shouldn't be spending time outside today, at least during midday exposure. Regardless of your skin tone, this is important. UV rays are pretty damaging to the skin and they damage the skin more than just burn the skin. So do you then need to wear sunscreen if the UV index is zero to one, especially if you're somebody who doesn't really burn easily to begin with? The answer is yes. The UV index should be used to assess your risk of burning on a given day, but it is not a tool to say uh, that unprotected sun exposure is risk-free. It's only telling you about the risk of sunburn. It's not telling you about all of the other things that happen to your skin on exposure to UV. And that's really important because it turns out that a lot of the sun exposure that you get that is what's called subarethemal, meaning the dosage is below the amount needed to burn your skin. That accumulates over time and ultimately is what contributes to the risk of skin cancers like basal cell carcinoma, for example, and it also contributes to skin aging. These cumulative low dose exposures that we get pretty much every day, they contribute not only to skin aging and skin cancer, but they have some pretty profound effects on the health of our skin overall. Doses of UV from the sun below the amount needed to begin to burn your skin actually can still harm the skin by suppressing the immune system. And as a result, that puts you at a greater risk for skin infections. And it also puts you at a greater risk for skin cancers because the immune system can't circulate around and get rid of damage damaged cells as well. These UV rays also impair healing. So if you have any kind of cut or maybe you have acne, it's going to get in the way of proper healing. If you have a deeper skin tone, these things affect you too. There is this idea that people who have a deeper skin tone, skin of color, does not need to be worried about sunscreen, but you really do. Yes, you don't burn, but these other outcomes of sun exposure are still affecting your skin, impairing the immune system, delaying healing. And an issue that really more often plagues people of a deeper skin tone is issues surrounding hyperpigmentation, which are made worse and more persistent, more stubborn, more difficult to treat from chronic daily unprotected sun exposure. See, unfortunately, consumers associate the need for sun protection with these occasional extreme exposures, like being at the beach or at the pool or at a water park or something like that. And they ignore the effects of chronic low dose cumulative exposures over time, which turns out play just as an important role in skin health, skin aging, and the risk for skin cancers and aggravating certain skin conditions. It's estimated that over your lifetime, you will receive tens to thousands of doses of low level UV rays that ultimately accumulate to damage the skin. And by wearing sunscreen daily, you actually can mitigate your risk of skin cancers by 50% as predicted by models. It's not enough to just wear sunscreen intermittently. There are studies showing that daily use of a sunscreen lowers the cumulative burden of sun damage in the skin and reduces skin cancer risk more so than just intermittently wearing sunscreen when perceived risk is high, like on a beach day or when the UV index is high. So you shouldn't use the UV index to guide whether or not you wear sunscreen. You should wear sunscreen daily because 
it's helpful for protecting you from those low doses of UV that do cumulatively contribute to not only skin aging, but skin cancer risk. I'm a big advocate of wearing sunscreen daily as well for the purpose of making it a habit. I, well, I just find that it's a simple thing to put it on every morning. And if you do that, then 10, 20, 30 years from now, your skin will be much better off. It's just a habit to get into. And rather than negotiating, just think of it as you are protecting yourself from that, the cumulative damage from low doses. Now, I will get the question, this is extreme. I don't consider it extreme to just put sunscreen on in the morning. Most people do some kind of skincare in the morning, whether it be putting on a moisturizer. Most sunscreens are moisturizing. You can even buy a moisturizer with SP. SPF, just doing something on a daily basis is helpful for the health of your skin. But it's also important to not be overly confident in your sunscreen wearing abilities and ignore the other sun protective measures, especially on the days where the UV index is high. Uh, don't use your, your diligence with sunscreen as an excuse to stay out longer in the sun, especially on these days where your risk is so high of getting you know, more damaging amounts of UV. Uh, sunscreen is really just one small piece of sun protection. And yes, I know not everyone tolerates sunscreen well. Another, th another thing to consider about the UV index is that it doesn't take into account the effect of surfaces on UV exposure. So for example, snow will reflect about 50% of UV rays onto your skin. Sand reflects about 15% and water reflects about 10%. So you are actually getting sun exposure from sand, water, and from snow if you live somewhere that's snowy. And when I talk about skin aging, there's this misconception that I'm talking about the aesthetics, the cosmetic benefit of, well, I don't know, not having wrinkles, but skin aging reflects a loss of skin integrity, which is important. The skin is the largest organ. It's protecting you from the outside world. And as we get into our older, wiser years, you wanna make sure that the skin integrity is healthy and as strong as possible. And premature skin aging is a reflection of weakening of the health of your skin. So you don't want that. It's more than just the the you know aesthetic benefit of not having wrinkles. It's really about keeping your skin as healthy for as long as possible. Because guess what? We're living longer and longer. You're gonna be on this planet a lot longer. And so keep your skin healthy. It will pay off dividends. Now, I will always get the question about the vitamin D synthesis thing. Doesn't sunscreen get in the way of vitamin D? Don't we need UV rays to make vitamin D in our skin? And we have research refuting this. Sunscreen does not interfere with the skin's ability to synthesize vitamin D from UV rays. Sunscreen use under maximal use conditions does not interfere with the skin's ability to synthesize vitamin D from the sun. Now, if the UV index is high or extreme, 11 plus, for example, I would not be so worried about vitamin D because a large proportion of the UV rays that are actually hitting your skin are UVA rays. And those have nothing to do with vitamin D synthesis. It's UVB that, that controls vitamin D. And the intense amount of UVA actually degrades the enzymes that are needed in the skin to make vitamin D. So it's been argued actually that sunscreens that can block out that UVA actually may help your skin better synthesize vitamin D. So don't think about the message to avoid going out in the sun when the UV index is high or extreme or the message to protect your skin from the sun wearing sunscreen. Those, are, those messages, they're not putting you at risk for vitamin D deficiency. They're simply not. Vitamin D deficiency is not explained by wearing sunscreen and it's not explained by avoiding going outdoors when the UV index is 11 plus. The reason for vitamin D deficiency is complex, likely reflecting a variety of metabolic parameters of health and not so much just, oh, I've been inside too much. In summary, the UV index is not to suggest that unprotected sun exposure regardless of the index is risk-free. Just because the UV index is low or zero does not mean zero UV and does not mean zero risk of going out unprotected. You should still wear sunscreen. All right, y'all, I hope that clarifies the UV index, how I think it's a useful tool. I highly encourage you to download the uh, app from the EPA. I think it's very helpful 
for me personally, it does help me decide if I'm if I'm gonna do things outside or not. Like for example, I yesterday the UV index was quite low. I went out with sunscreen on as I usually do in a hat and enjoyed the day. It was a beautiful day out. But if the UV index is 11 plus, I'm not gonna be going on a, on a walk outside. I'm just not. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stay inside during the midday hours. Um, for example, you know, if, you, if you're a parent and you have a child, if you have a child, you're planning a birthday party outside. Most, most parents, if they woke up the morning at the birthday party and they saw that there was like a 99% chance of rain, and there was, you know, there were already clouds in the sky, they would probably be rethinking and bringing the party indoors. But how many of those same parents would ha apply the same logic if they woke up and saw that the UV index was slated to be 11 plus? Probably not that many, but that is how you could use the UV index to inform your day. Say, the risk is too great of serious damage to the skin. Speaking of kids, UV exposure in early childhood really is what sets the stage for skin cancers way later on in life. Kids, you know, should be outside playing and everything. But if the UV index is 11 plus, and it is noon, I would like, you know, maybe rein in the activities to indoors during that time. That is how I think the UV index is a useful tool. Let me know in the comments though, do you utilize the UV index at all? Uh, is it helpful to you or has it just confused you? Hopefully this video helped clarify things. And on the end slate, I'm going to put my video on vitamin D and sunscreen if you wanna learn more about that. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.